Hey guys, this is Nathan, and welcome back to Feed the Beast Inventions. So, I just thought I'd give you guys a heads up as to why I have been playing Inventions so much here lately. Uh, due to my job, I have not been having a whole lot of time to play during the week, and so by the time that I get to the weekend, I've kind of forgotten what I've been working on on both series together. So... I think what I'm going to be doing this weekend is 100% inventions, and I'm probably going to do Sky Factory next weekend, and I'm probably just going to alternate back and forth between the two series. If I have any time during the week, I will probably just play whichever series is going to be coming up that following weekend. So just giving you a heads up on that, what's going on there. I have not quit Sky Factory. I am loving that map. I'm also loving this map, so it's just kind of a, yeah, it's hard to manage two series and a job, so uh, that's what's going on. So what do we got planned for today? So there's a couple of things that I'm thinking of, and uh, we're just kind of going to be doing some odd jobs here today. Uh, of course, we always have issues with our power and our uh, ore processing and things like that. That kind of stuff, I'm going to put it on hold today because we have some other issues to work on. First off, you'll notice there are basically no trees left in my tree farm. So since we have gotten, whoops, since we have gotten uh, away from our dependence on charcoal for power, I have decided to shut the tree farm down. Uh, we have tons and tons of logs from this thing and tons of saplings and... Yeah, there's really no reason for me to continue running it. We can use this land for something much more productive. And I want to just pop in here real quick and check and see how things are going. Now, the last time that I checked, uh, we were pretty close. Ah, get this stupid thing off of my hotbar. Um, yeah, so we are producing enough steam now to run this thing at 5,500 RF a tick. Now, we are not using that much power currently. So we don't have to worry about that. So I'm assuming, yep, all of these guys are up to full full temperature now. And uh, like I was saying in the last episode, we use one bucket every minute in each one of these boilers. And we're probably getting somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 buckets a minute when we need it. Now I'm pretty sure also that the gasoline tank over here is going to be completely full. And so that is going to, yep. So that is going to greatly decrease the amount of power drain from these guys because you can see all of the refineries are full as well. So yeah, we're finally set up on that. So we don't need the tree farm here anymore and instead we can use this ground for something else. So all of the tree cutting that I was doing during the last episode made me realize how crummy my food sources here. I've been eating apples and I know we have much better food sources in the game and uh, so I'd like to get some of those going. So obviously we could use steak that is a very common food source but I don't really feel like sitting there killing cows over and over and over. Instead I feel like I want to try well two things really. First off, I don't know, I don't think that rabbit stew stacks. Now it is probably one of the best food sources, I think, uh, golden a or golden apples, golden carrots, and uh, I think there was one other, I can't remember, uh, but there's not much better than a rabbit stew, but I don't think they stack, and if they don't stack, that's not going to be a viable option for us because we can't carry around a whole inventory full of rabbit stew. So a high level food that does stack is pumpkin pie. So I think that's probably what I want to do. So we're going to have to set up a couple of things. We need to set up in that area a sugarcane farm, a pumpkin farm, and then somewhere we are going to need to get some eggs. So we do have a lot of eggs here in our ME system. We look up eggs. We have 83. That's several stacks of eggs, but yeah, that's not 
quite going to be enough. I want to check and see if we have a hoe. No, we don't. So we're going to grab a few sticks and make a hoe real quick. And we'll just make an iron one. That'll be plenty good. And we're going to need some buckets of water too. We have one bucket on us right now. And we'll just grab one more here. And yeah, the easiest... The name on that refrigerator made me think that someone was on and I'm the only one on the server right now. That strange. But so we'll get ourselves some water here so that we can place in some sugar cane here as well. But uh, right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to come through here. I've got 16 uh, pumpkin seeds right now. I went out into the uh, mining dimension and just looked around for some pumpkins. I found some. And so uh, this is what I've got right now. As we get more pumpkins, we will uh, be, of course, planting more. But I think we have more than enough to do one of these sections. And we're not going to remove the extra harvesters either. We're just going to let this thing go with the large number of harvesters that it has. And I'm not really too concerned about that. So, yeah, we're going to have some of this for pumpkins, some of it for sugar cane. And uh, then I need to set up something for eggs. So I'm going to get this planted to pumpkins and sugar cane. And I'll be back in just a little bit. And so now I have three, well, call them paddocks each of the pumpkins and the sugar cane. We are still getting tons more pumpkins than sugarcane, though. You can see we got about, oh, 50% more pumpkins. But, uh, yeah, that's working. We'll be able to get that stuff. So I set up just a simple vanilla egg collection system. But I put a reinforced cache here so that we can have 160,000 eggs there. But so all that I need to do is break some eggs into here and get some chickens. So I'm just going to sit here and do this for a little bit, and there's one already. So it's going to be a little time before we actually get some eggs out of this, because it takes five minutes for these guys to grow up, and then it takes another five minutes for them to lay an egg. So, yeah, it could be a while, and we're probably going to have to do this a few times to get enough chickens in here to actually produce enough eggs. So once we get that, we have all of our ingredients for making the pumpkin pies, and uh, I think we'll be able to move on to something else. So what I've got in mind here, there's a spot down here on our road system that I'm not really too fond of. So we're going up into the hill here, and we have just these carpenter's wedge slopes, and even though it is nice to just be able to walk up that, I'm not really too keen on how steep it is. So I had been doing a little bit of experimenting when I was coming up with my bridge in Sky Factory, and I made some Carpenter's Collapsible Blocks. Now the Carpenter's Collapsible Blocks are made really simply by just putting nine Carpenter's Blocks together, and it gives you nine of the Carpenter's Collapsible Blocks. Now, the way that these work is really nice. They're very, very simple. All that we have to do is come down here, and we're going to dig up the angle that we want this thing to run at. So, I want to go about, oh, say, five blocks back. And so, I think we're going to have a bit more than we need here. But, uh, let's just go ahead and break a little bit more of this. And we're out of power, so, yeah, whatever. We'll just break this stuff. And we have some ghost blocks. I always like ghost blocks. Okay, so this will be enough to uh, demonstrate here. We've got four blocks worth of distance here. So if we put the carpenter's block here, oh, nope, we have to dig out a little more. So we're going to have to put our lap pack on and get our uh, drill charged back up. So we'll break this stuff out and get it to where it's not thinking about that and then we're gonna break those guys out. So now this should work. Now if I place, and also these are not making it work properly either. 
So now this should work properly. Now if I place me if I place these uh, collapsible blocks here, you can see they automatically take themselves down to the appropriate height. I don't know what happened with that one. That's just strange. Oh, I see. It is planning out to do this section over here. That makes a... It, it's very interesting the way that these work. But they automatically search for edges and find the best slope to go between them. So I'm going to get a few of these done in a few places. We've got another spot over there where Wesley is at where we're going up a hill and I lost one of my blocks but so now yeah this is actually working correctly now so we'll have this nice smooth transition from the one section of road to the next we can skin these then with our asphalt blocks but uh, I don't think that we will get the run boost anymore on this section but that's okay so yeah, that looks a lot better than the steep slope that we had before, and apparently we have some more ghost blocks. Nice. So yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of work here on this stuff. I've been wanting to get this roadway finished, going back to Wandering One's original base, and it's just been one of those things that, you know, these slopes kind of made it to where I didn't know what to do for sure. So I'm going to get this taken care of, and I'll be back in a little bit. Well, guys, the farms are just absolutely rocking here. We have four and a half stacks, basically, of each pumpkins and the sugar cane. Now, uh, I was thinking for some reason that I had to get one sugar cane from one, or one sugar from one sugar cane, but uh, I neglected to think about the fact that this is modded. And so we can take our sugar cane and put it in the pulverizer here, and that gives us two sugar from each one. So we're going to run a stack of sugar cane through there, and we're going to grab two stacks of pumpkins. Whoops. Not three, two. And we've got a fair number of eggs down here now. We have 192 eggs, so we only need, uh, well, let's see, eight stacks. That's how many I can hold. So there we go, there's eight stacks of eggs. We're going to head into the base, because that's where the sugar is going, or the house. And we're going to make ourselves up some pumpkin pies. So let's drop in the eggs. We don't need the seeds anymore. So we got pumpkins. We need uh, sugar. Sugar. And then we need eggs. So there we go pumpkin pie. We do have exchange value on this stuff, but I don't know that it's really necessary. And let's just see, do we have all of our sugar yet? Ah, uh, yes we do. So two stacks of pumpkin pie, there we go. So this stuff would be tremendously better than my apples. Not only does it fill a lot more hunger, it also lasts longer. Now another thing that I did here that I forgot to mention earlier, I have added in these rotating elevators from open blocks. Now these things, their recipe is, uh, not the uses, the recipe. Uh, it's six pieces of wool, two pieces of iron, and an ender pearl. And uh, you can see the arrows on them, they turn you to face a certain direction. So like this one here will always face us towards our ME crafting terminal. Now the way that you get them to face is when you place them down, you want to face in the opposite direction and place them down. It's kind of weird how that works. But the one down here faces me off to the side. So this one up here, you face this way, but when you come down to this one, you face that way. So if I go up, I face the terminal, come down, I face there. So yeah, that's pretty nice. So, yep, uh, another thing here, I have put 16K storage cells in every one of my spots in the ME drive there now. And, yeah, I've got another one over there. So, this is going to need a little bit of cleanup work here very soon. But, uh, yeah, we got our pumpkin pies. That's a good thing. We'll be continuing to collect eggs and pumpkins and sugar cane. And, uh... I don't know, might try to set something up for automatic crafting on these. I don't know for sure what I want to do on that. But uh, 
Yeah, I did finally get this to work the way that I wanted it to over here. And it really looks nice. I did run out of uh, materials, so I had to stop. But uh, I kind of terraformed this ed edge a little so that it looks a little bit better. Um, I don't know what to do here on these sides for sure. You know, if you have slopes like this on the terrain, I've noticed it just doesn't look like Minecraft. I don't know what it is. But unfortunately, we do slow down on those, and we can't put down a road line. So, yeah, just all in all, there are advantages to not having these carpenter's blocks, but at the same time, yeah, it kind of sucks not having them, and I fell in a hole. So I was planning on making a bridge here. I don't know for sure what I want to do with that now. But, uh, yeah, we got our pumpkin pie now. That was a pretty big deal. And I'm going to do a little bit of thinking about what we need to do next, and I'll be back in a little bit. So I've been doing a little bit of thinking, and yeah, our diamond drill is real nice. We've got flight, but we can do a lot better than we do. So I started looking around, and we have the Vajra, which is uh, just an absolutely incredible tool, and the Quantum Suit from Industrial Craft 2. So we're going to see if we can get these made up here. So the Vajra, first off, requires an energy crystal, some iron plates, carbon plates, advanced alloy, Lapatron crystal, the Vajra core. The Vajra core takes a magnetron, iridium reinforced plates, superconductors, an HV transformer, Tesla coil. The magnetron is a superconductor with iron and copper plates. Superconductor is a superconductor cover with glass fiber cables and gold. And the superconductor cover is advanced alloy, iridium reinforced plate, carbon plate. The iridium reinforced plate, we need an implosion compre compressor. So, yeah, this seems to be where we're going to have to start. Now, I'm not sure how to make this implosion compressor, but I do know the industrial TNT is regular TNT with flint. And I'm not sure how much gunpowder we have here. So let's just take a look here. We have 33 gunpowder. So, just curious, gunpowder. Is there any way that we can make these this really easy? So we can take charcoal, sulfur, and saltpeter. I don't think we have any saltpeter. Let's see if there's anything else that we can do here. It looks like they're all going to take either niter or saltpeter. Niter is saltpeter or an macerator. Well, we can macer or pulverize uh, blitz rods. We can pulverize sandstone. That's definitely a possibility. Uh, we can run a sag mill on saltpeter or yeah, same same thing. Uh, crushing the blitz rod, so it looks like it might be that we want to get the blitz in a spawner. I don't know. But let's just take a look here on niter, because I'm pretty sure that we don't have anything else. Yeah, so that's going to be something we may have to look into. So I'm going to do a little research on how to put together that implosion compressor, and I'm probably going to have to rearrange a little bit of the stuff inside of the power factory over here. Because, yeah, we really don't have room for another one of these multi-blocks, and I know that it takes one of these multi-blocks. So, yep, I'm going to have to move my uh, generator back a little bit, and probably clean up a bunch of these machines and put them along the wall, and get it to where we actually have room for another one of these multi-block structures. And I suppose I could do this a little bit better too. If I were to take these and put them on the side, and they would probably go on this side because this is my industrial craft side. So if I did that, I could move this over by two blocks. That would easily give us room for another uh, one of these multi-blocks over here. So I might do that. So I'm going to get a little of this stuff taken care of, and I'll be back in a little bit. Well, a couple of things as I've started to move stuff around inside of the power factory. First off, we need the electric wrench to be able to move a lot of those IC2 machines. So this guy is made with a regular industrial craft wrench and a small power unit. Now we could use this regular wrench to try to pick those up, 
but we have a chance of not picking them up and getting an item casing instead. So we'll make this first, this is just six pieces of bronze, pretty simple. Then we need this small power unit. Now this takes an RE battery, copper cables, electronic circuit, iron item casing, an electric motor, the electric motor, it's 10 item casings, iron ingots and coils. The coils are copper wire with iron ingots. And it didn't put the iron ingots in there. That's interesting. So we need to make that, then we can make our motor. And then we can make this guy. So we had everything else. And then we can finally make our electric wrench. Now the other thing I have noticed I built a low voltage emitter for the generator and we want to make this high voltage emitter. So this thing takes a power IO module, an iron frame and the redstone iron winding from advanced generators and then it takes an HV transformer from IC2. Now this HV transformer takes an advanced RE battery, some insulated gold cable and an electronic circuit. This guy is bronze item casings insulated copper cable, cable, sulfur, and pulverized lead. So we're going to make that real quick. And then we can go back. That needs the MV transformer, which is a basic item casing and some insulated copper cable. So we're going to grab that. Then we're going to make our high voltage transformer. And finally, we are going to make the high voltage emitter. So now this thing will allow us to I would imagine take the entire output of our generator and put it towards EU. Uh, right now we are limited to I think 128 EU a tick, yeah, so we don't want that. We want to have as much EU as we can coming out of this thing, so we're going to go ahead and place this down here. Now if we look, yeah, we're putting out 1,375 EU a tick now, and this guy is charging really, really fast. So now we need to drop in our electric wrench, and I would imagine that this will take every bit of the power for that to do it. Now there is a way to change the mode on this thing, and we're going to have to check the controls real quick, because chances are I have disabled it in some way, shape, or form. So... Where is this? Hmm. Where are you, industrial craft? I thought that they would be in alphabetical order. Hmm. Well, I don't know. Oh, there we go. I see two. So, mode switch is M, and that's going to have to be something else because that's bound somewhere else. Let's see, what else is M bound to? Uh, better Builder's Wand? Let's just turn that off. Anything else? Obviously, there is still something else. Uh, locomotive mode. We're not doing anything with Railcraft right now. And that looks like it. So now we should be good. Yep, we can change our mode with M. Um, shift M. M right click. Okay, there we go. Lossless wrench mode. It is. Hold your mode uh, switch button and right click. So right now lossless mode is enabled. So now if we shift right click on this, we can pick it up without any trouble and that almost completely drained the... Ah! No! Darn it. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and charge this guy back up and we can pick up some more stuff. So, yep, I've got a little bit of stuff here to move around still. I'm going to fill these holes in in the floor. Now, I did take the power cables and item conduits that I had running through this tunnel out. And I have moved a tesseract down here to power the harvesters here. I also have removed the planter here because there's no reason for it anymore. So, yep, got a little bit more stuff to move around here, and then maybe we can start figuring out how to get that implosion compressor going. So, a little bit of research later, and I've pretty well got this figured out. So, we need the implosion compressor yet. I've got the standard and reinforced machine casings that we need. The compressor, it, 
The implosion compressor is a compressor to advanced machine casings, advanced alloys, and advanced circuits. A lot of advanced stuff there. So we've got that, and what we need is to lay all of this stuff out in a certain pattern. Now I've torn just about everything down here in the factory, and my gosh, this place looks weird being opened up like this. So running underneath this line of torches, I have a power line, I have a power line running here, and I have my MFE here in the corner now. So what I'm going to do, I am going to break out, well, actually I'm not going to break out anything there, I'm just going to remove some torches and, uh, yeah, lighting is still an issue. So we need one of the standard machine casings in each corner, and you know what, we're actually going to place this in the floor. So we're going to break this down by one block, and of course we're breaking stuff that we're not supposed to be breaking. So, now let's try this again. So we need the standard machine casings in the corners. Then we need some reinforced machine casings, making an X in the center. Then we need an entire layer, hollow layer of course, of standard machine casings. We need the standard casings in the corners again, and then the reinforced machine casings making an X again. Yeah, man, I can't seem to put these where they need to be. So then the way that I saw it, the implosion compressor itself went on top. So it does show that it has the multi-block. So let's just see now if we, well, let's make sure that we're, okay, lossless wrench mode. So let's just see, can we place this up against the side? Yes, we can, okay. So that'll just make that a little bit shorter and we don't have to worry about being spawnable up on top. That's good. So I'm going to go underneath here and grab some of our cable. And we'll power this sucker up. And now we should be able to just uh, place down a little bit of that and this thing should be ready to go. So now we just need to make up some of that industrial uh, TNT and we should be able to start making our iridium reinforced plates but I do think that we are just about out of time so let's go with the industrial TNT so we need to make as much TNT as we can sand we don't have any sand in the system oh yeah that's right it is in and I keep forgetting that I have this elevator here now my sand is all in here. So let's just grab out as much as we can and we'll go ahead and drop all of this stuff off into the system. So back up we go. And let's try this again. Okay, so we're able to make six pieces of TNT. Woohoo! So that's going to make us, what, eight pieces of the industrial TNT? What? Why? Why? Why for you be that way? TNT. Okay, so the TNT goes across the middle, and then we need flint. And I say, I know that we have this stuff. So there's our industrial TNT, and uh, yeah, so iridium. Uh, iridium. So the iridium reinforced plates is the iridium alloy which takes iridium ingots and diamond dust. And I don't think I have any of that stuff ready. So the iridium, yeah, so I just have the ore. So this is going to take a little while to get everything set up. And I know for a fact that we are out of time now. So I am going to say uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to give a thumbs up and let me know. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any thoughts about what I should be working on or tips about what I have been working on, go ahead and leave those down in the comments and I will see you next time. Bye!